Let's now try to understand how a gyroscope works. This should be fun. Be a little bit patient and take it very methodically here. Don't rush too fast and it will all make perfectly good sense. There's nothing vastly new or different here about what I'm going to discuss. So other than what we've already discussed in terms of angular quantities, torque and angular momentum, it's all pretty basic. So we're first going to consider a gyroscope. <laughs> oriented horizontally on a frictionless pivot and thing to note is the disc itself is not spinning right now so notice omega zero equals zero omega zero is the angular velocity of the disc and it is not spinning so we're going to take this in two stages in this first stage it's a non-spinning gyroscope but if it's but it's pivoted here on the frictionless pivot and gravity acts to pull it down to the table. So gravity mg wants to rotate this gyroscope down to the table. I've carefully defined x, y, and z. So keep note of these perpendicular directions. So there's a normal force to cause the sum of the forces to be zero vertically, horizontally as well. There is no horizontal force. All right, now here's the radius from the pivot point to the location of the mass, which is the disk itself. And this thing will fall to the floor. So that is just showing that this thing will follow this trajectory as gravity pulls it down to the floor. It'll just go bonk right onto the table. Very simple, but it's a, a very important point to understand the entire process of how a gyroscope works. So initially, omega prime, now the prime is going to be this rotational quantity of just rotating down to the table. Omega is the spinning disk. Omega prime is the spin about this axis here, the pivot point, spinning about the pivot point. Two different rotations. Hopefully that is very sensible. So the initial angular velocity of the system about the y-axis is zero. As this rotates down, it's going to be spinning about the y-axis, right? Okay, glad you agree. Let's continue. Since there is an external torque applied to this gyroscope, causing it to rotate down, you're going to end up with a little angular momentum. But initially, since it's not moving, omega is zero, it's not rotating initially. <coughs> omega zero is zero, so omega prime zero is zero. Therefore, the initial angular momentum about the y-axis is zero. Now the weight applies a torque about the pivot. <clears throat> so subsequently, it's not going to be true. There's going to be a little angular momentum about y. So sum of the torques is equal to the rate at which the angular momentum changes. So is this, this torque that causes the rotation is causing an angular momentum about the pivot point as time progresses. That's all that's saying. And therefore, we can say that the differential angular momentum about that pivot point is torque dt. Now, the direction of that torque, do the, if you just think of, well, r cross f, really. Here's r, and here's f. Put this vector over here and place it down like this and cross r into f with your right hand. And you'll notice the direction of that vector is in the y direction. Or if you just think the, the sense in which this the torque is spinning this clockwise. So if you just wrap your hand clockwise around in this direction, your thumb will point in the y direction. It's another way to do it. So direction of torque is in the plus y. Direction of dl prime, the differential angular momentum, the angular momentum vector is in the same direction as the torque. So it's plus y as well. So the angular momentum resulting from gravity twisting this down, that is differential L prime plus the next differential L prime is the next dt occurs, etc., etc. So we have these progressively adding differential angular momentums as a result of torque rotating this thing down which will then point in the direction plus y. So there it is, 
as the gyroscope falls to the table, you're developing this angular momentum that points in the plus y direction. That's L prime. Now we're set up to take this the next step. So let's review the current situation as we now have it. We have a non-spinning gyroscope that's hit the table due to the torque provided by the weight, mg acting on the weight, pivoting about this frictionless pivot point. The thing is just clunked down to the table. It's not very exciting yet, is it? But it's just such an important part of this. So there's an angular velocity change about the y-axis. An angular velocity change, and thus an angular momentum produced from that. So if we look at the coordinate system, a little DL. we have, yes, a little dl. A little dl. Yes, we know that. There's a whole bunch of them that occur here. A bunch of little dls that add up together as this thing is accelerating down to the floor. And that produces a pretty, a pretty sizable, sizable final L due to, due to the increase in angular velocity as it rotates, rotates to the table. So, in each delta t, there's a change in the angular momentum. So dl prime, a little dl, equals torque dt. So through time, this becomes angular momentum prime dl little dl plus another one plus another one plus another one plus another one etc as this process takes place now i'm making a big point about these little dls not to be funny or cute but the fact is it's you know if this is all that's going on this gyroscope flopping to the ground then we wouldn't have to worry about this so much and say yes at the end we have an angular velocity and a angular momentum associated with that but there's going to be other phenomena that's going to prevent this thing from going to the ground rapidly. In fact, it's going to, we're going to find that it's going to essentially seem like it's hovering and not being allowed to traverse this path, even though it will be. So there really will be little differential DLs taking place here, along with the additional angular momentum of the spinning disk. So you will see that it's important to consider a small little change in the angular momentum through a differential time is all we have to be concerned about and then we're going to conserve angular momentum along with the spinning disk and that's what we're going to engage in at this point now, now let's, let's investigate, investigate the, the angular, angular vectors, vectors with, with the, the disk, disk spinning. spinning yes well it's about time right let's do that so here it is coordinate system. The, the angular, angular velocity, velocity of the, of the disk, disk is no longer zero. zero. In, In fact, fact it's, it's very, very large. large. Yes, there's a large omega. This thing is, this disk is spinning like crazy. So notice how big I've made this omega representation. Anyway, lots of RPM. So it's spinning very rapidly. Therefore, you know, especially because it's got a relatively high moment of inertia, it's a solid disk, it's going to have a high angular momentum. Now, there's the normal force again, and there's the weight, there's the torque. So the torque from the weight is produced in the positive y direction, same direction as the little angular momentums that arise from this thing trying to fall down, as we've looked at. So torque is our cross mg. You do that cross product and you get the torque in that direction. Now let's draw on the initial angular momentum vector from the angular velocity of this disk spinning around. All right, so wrap your hand around in the direction I'm showing there. Your thumb should point which way? That's right, to the right. There it is. So there's L0. Now that's not L prime zero. This now is the angular momentum from the spinning disk. It's what we've been waiting for all along. So as the torque tries to rotate this thing down, dl prime is produced in the y direction in time dt. We've already investigated that. So as this, this isn't drawn to scale, but this large initial angular momentum of the spinning disk, the disk is being rotated down. So you have a little dl produced like that. We've looked at. So we really need to add that 
angular moment momentum is conserved so we're going to add it to l0 the angular momentum of the spinning disk so we have l0 plus dl prime and that gives us adding this new vector on dl prime gives us the new angular momentum l prime l just l so this new angular momentum that occurs a little bit later is the vector sum of L0 plus DL prime. And if you think about it, this is in the Y plane. So this new angular momentum is, has not elevated in the Z plane. It's, it's rotating. It's actually moving about the Z axis here. Okay, And it's going to start rotating now is what we're going to see. Now let's put all this together and try and make some sense out of it. We have dl prime always perpendicular to l. And always perpendicular to l. So l is pointing in the x direction. That's where l was, at least to begin with. And dl prime was in the positive y direction. So in this perspective drawing, it doesn't look perpendicular, but of course it is. And it simply rotates the final angular momentum through tiny, well, differential angles around the z-axis. So here's L0. There's our little dl. Of course, it's much smaller than that. And a tiny differential change in the angular momentum that is, and initially at least, pointing in the y direction will result in a total momentum given by this red vector. And since, keep in mind, that the entire angular momentum is dominated, just dominated by the angular momentum of the spinning disk. So that L0 is really big compared to differential L prime. And the resulting angular momentum later is almost all the momentum of the spinning disk, which is gonna result in that spinning disk being oriented in this direction. It's changing the orientation of the spinning disk because that's where essentially all the angular momentum is. So the next little differential step, and I'll show a few steps here. There's our new one and new angular momentum, and this just keeps going. I'm trying to give a perspective here with all the little DLs, and you keep adding the little DL the onto the momentum vectors, vectors sometime later. later. Notice, Notice how, how it is rotated, rotated or precessed around, around the z-axis. Yes. Okay, so that is the whole point. It's, precess it's precessing, precessing around the z-axis. There is our wonderful word that I could not spit out. There it is in bold, precession. That is the result of all those little DLs being added onto the previous angular momentum vector. And the directions in which this, these little DLs get added, it's always perpendicular. And so it basically drags that spinning disk orientation around with it because the final angular momentum is going to be basically the angular momentum of the spinning disk. So now let's put it into a perspective that we can quantitatively get some information about this precession. All right, so here's L0. Perpendicular to that will be a little dl, dl prime. And as it rotates through d phi to make the new final angular momentum, and since this is differential, this length and this length, L0 and our final L are the same in this case. So L is really the vector addition of L0 plus dl prime. And again, same length. So the magnitude of dl prime, the magnitude of this is really just r theta, right? which in this case is L, magnitude of L, d phi, as the angle is d phi. So there is our relationship, which gives us d phi, the angle through which it precessed as being dl prime over L. And now what we really want to do is have a quantitative expression for the rate at which that precession transpires. So let's figure that out. Precession angular velocity omega. So omega will be, by definition, the rate at which the precession changes. 
d phi dt. That's an angular velocity, right? The rate through which an angle progresses. So just taking the time rate of change of this quantity gives us dl prime over l dt. And now dl d, dl prime dt. dl dt, what's that? Oh, that's right. dl dt is torque. So we now have torque over angular momentum. And that is it in essence. The precession angular velocity is directly proportional to torque. Makes sense inversely proportional to angular momentum. It makes sense when you realize that it's torque that's producing those little DLs that's forcing the final angular momentum to have a different orientation, which is forcing the disk to follow that orientation appropriately. So the final angular momentum vector is consistent with the rotating disk. Now torque and angular momentum can be expanded to be MGR for torque in this case, and L is I omega. So there it is in a slightly expanded nutshell, I guess, and hopefully that made a little bit of sense, and we will demonstrate this in class as well.